All right, so we have Chapter 7 now, and Chapter 7 is um, still with Trig, and we are on the unit circle, okay? And the unit circle is basically showing you how sine and cosine work around one circle that is one unit in length or one, ra uh, one radius uh, along the whole way around. It is a circle with a radius of 1 and the center at the origin, so that's 0, 0. In the unit circle, um, the little formula you need to keep in mind is x squared plus y squared equals 1. Because if it's on the unit circle, if there is a point that exists on that circle, if you did x squared plus y squared and it adds up to 1, then that means it's always constantly going to be a radius of 1 the entire way around the circle. Meaning, if it's always going to be 1, then that point is on the unit circle. And it's just a point to keep in mind the entire way around. Um, these are the, the obvious points, um, just to keep in mind, 1, 0, 0, 1, negative 1, 0, and 0, negative 1, because that's one unit the whole way around on the unit circle with the center being 0, 0. But of course, as you can see, points like this, you know, that are on that brown circle, they exist as well the whole way around. So, show that the point root 3 over 3, root 6 over 3 is on the unit circle. Well, it's very simple. Use the formula I just gave you. It's the x squared plus y squared equals 1. And this is a point, so that's x and that's y. So literally, it's the square root of 3 over 3 squared plus the square root of 6 over 3 squared equals 1. So, um, you just take the little squared through to both, so you get 3 over 9 plus 6 over 9, which gives 9 over 9, which is 1. So, that point is on the unit circle. So that's true. In example 2, what we're saying is um, what other point, what would y have to be basically in order for that to be in the unit circle, but it wants to know what it would have to be if that was in the circle, but it was in quadrant 4. So, basically, you plug in what you know, that's x, and when you're doing this, I take that squared through, so it's 3 fourths. So to get y by itself, I'd minus 3 fourths on both sides. So I get y squared equals 1 fourth. I square root both sides. Square root of 1 is 1, square root of 4 is 2, but remember whenever you square root both sides, you get plus or minus. So it's plus or minus 1 half. However, you got to keep in mind for that last problem, they want to know um, in quad 4, so it's not actually plus or minus 1 half, that's the answer for the last problem. Um, in quadrant 4, y, okay, um, y, where would that be? So y would actually, if you think about it, would be negative because it's in quadrant 4, it's down, right? Over x, which is left or right, down y to be in that quadrant 4, so actually the only answer for last problem is negative 1 half, not positive 1 half. But continuing here with example 3, it says find the term at a point in the unit circle defined by if it was 3 pi. So you have your unit circle, and you know that's 0, you know that's pi over 2, you know that's pi, that's 3 pi over 2, and that's back to 2 pi. So if we keep going around the circle, right, if we keep going around, Everything's in terms of pi over 2, because I can even write pi as 2 pi over 2. That would be 3 pi over 2. This would be, over here, 4 pi over 2, right? Because that would be still 2. It would simplify to 2. That's why that's 5 pi over 2. So if you see the pattern, it's 1 pi over 2, 2 pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, 4 pi over 2, 5 pi over 2, 6 pi over 2. Well, 6 pi over 2, when you simplify that, is 3 pi. Or you could have looked at this as even pies are over here, odd pies are over here. But either way, the point is, what is that point? Well, on the unit circle, that means you go over negative 1 and up nothing. So it's negative 1, 0. So 3 pi is negative 1, 0. So what if it was negative pi? Well, you just go around a negative direction. That's negative pi over 2, that's negative pi. So that point is actually at the same exact spot as 3 pi. That's also at negative 1, 0. So they are actually both identical things. Find the term of point in the unit circle determined by negative pi over 2. Well, negative pi over 2, that means I go down negative pi over 2. This point right here would be me going over nothing and down negative 1, so 0, negative 1. 
So find it, uh, the terminal point on the unit circle determined by negative pi over 4. Okay, so negative pi over 4 means I go down. If that's negative pi over 2, it's going to end up somewhere in the middle, right? Because it's negative uh, pi over 2, so that ends up being right there. So to find out, though, where that point is, okay, we need to remember something. We need to remember that x stands for cosine and y stands for sine. So basically the point is we got to remember our reference angles, and our reference angle for pi over 4 is pi over 4. So that means I put my middle finger down, and cosine is the square root of the right over 2, which is root 2 over 2. Sine is the square root of the left over 2, which is root 2 over 2. So basically I'm going to get root 2 over 2, comma root 2 over 2. However, because it's in this quadrant down here, I need to remember the apple soda toga cow or the all students take calculus. The only thing positive down here is cosine. Everything else is negative. Meaning, which we just did this, cosine is uh, square root of the right over 2, which is root 2 over 2. Sine, I said, was um, square root of the left over 2, which is root 2 over 2, because middle finger is the pi over 4 finger. But in quadrant 4, cosine is positive, sine is negative, so there you go. And the other way to think about it is you go over in a positive direction, you'd have to go down negative direction to get the point. That's why it's a negative root 2 over 2. Find a terminal point in the unit circle determined by 3 pi over 4. Okay, so that's uh, pi over there, which is 4 pi over 4. So that means this would be 3 pi over 4. Once again, remember x and y. x is cosine, y is sine. And once again, the reference angle here is pi over 4. So with the reference angle being pi over 4, that's the middle finger again. So I know from the last problem, the square root of the right over 2 is root 2 over 2. The square root of the left over 2 is root 2 over 2. But in this quadrant, it's all students, meaning sine is positive. So sine is positive, but cosine is negative in this one. So that's why it's a negative, because think about it like this too. I'd go negative direction, then positive direction to get my answer. And I will finish up here um, the 7.1 section when we come back.